Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Devani and if you are watching this, you are watching my very first video here on YouTube. This channel is going to be dedicated to self-growth and self-improvement relating to topics such as faith, health, and lifestyle. I thought I'd kick off this channel by sharing my origin story, if you will, and this story is going to be sharing how I got started with my self-growth journey. This might be a long story, so I would recommend that you grab a snack, maybe something to drink. I'm diffusing an oil today. This is a wintergreen blend, so I'm feeling very relaxed. I'm feeling really ready to tell this story, so let's get into it. My parents growing up were super strict. I was the only child and my parents are technically brown. I'm Guyanese, so they really held on strong to all of those generational things that were passed down, all of those customs, traditions. They did not really give in to Western influence. So growing up, that was really hard for me because I was in public school. A lot of the people that I was surrounded by were not Guyanese or brown. They were American and I was not able to go anywhere. I was not able to do anything without my parents. And overall, I was just really, really controlled and kept in a box. When I was younger, I didn't really rebel. I did what I was told. I stayed home. I didn't ask to do anything. And overall, I was a pretty good child in elementary and middle school. I did get in trouble a few times because I would talk too much in class with my friends. And you know, the teacher would call my parents. But other than that, I was a pretty good kid. I didn't really get into much trouble. My mom and dad put me at a very early age into a classical Indian dance. And this was just kind of to get in touch with my ancestral roots since my family is from Guyana, my ancestors are from India. So honestly, I didn't really like doing Bharatanatyam, but I stayed and did it because I was told to. I was also put into singing at an early age and I played instruments and that was pretty fun but I did have to sing for Hindu religious functions and I would sing a lot of different places so I was placed in dance and singing slash playing instruments. So yeah that was pretty much my life. I would dance, I would sing, and I would just go everywhere with my parents or I would just stay home and my parents pretty much just told me what to do and that was it. Once I started high school, that's when my rebellious stage really began. I met my boyfriend, now fiance Cameron. We started to date and my parents found out twice and it was horrible. Maybe I'll save that for a different time because getting into all of that would be a lot. <laughs> but yeah, we ended up dating. My parents did not like it because like I said, they were super traditional and they would have wanted me to be with someone who is Guyanese or Indian, maybe Trinidadian, and also Hindu. Any other races would have probably been like Asian, white, I don't know, but they were kind of racist and they did not want me to be with someone who was black and Cameron, he is black. After my parents found out that I was dating Cam, I was in complete lockdown, I couldn't use any of my devices alone like even if i was doing homework like my mom would sit there and watch me i didn't have a phone but i did have like computers ipads ipod touch and i think i got all of those things except for the computer the desktop computer all of the other things got like taken away obviously but i couldn't even use the computer to do homework alone and it was even in the living room like my mom would sit on the couch and watch me do my homework even if it took hours and I also was in this pre-college program at the actual like community college in my county and my mom would literally wait in the lobby for me that entire time that the class was going on and I couldn't stay home alone so I was in complete lockdown I really felt like I could not breathe and it was just a very upsetting time for me when I was a senior in high school, I decided to take a dance class and it was like a modern dance class. For some reason, the teacher was super MIA. I think she might have quit like early on in the school year. So we had subs pretty much the entire school year and we didn't do like anything. We just got to like chill, maybe make up our own dance routines if we wanted to. It was honestly a free period. So this class is where I got really, really close to one of my friends. And I'm gonna give her a fake name just to protect her privacy. So we're gonna call her Sophia. 
So Sophia and I started to get really close because of this class and one day she came to class and she actually confided in me something that I'm not going to share because it's obviously her privacy and her place to share this secret but she shared something with me and it was it was horrible I felt for her and I really wanted her to get away from that situation I wanted her to heal and I just felt really bad for her when she was telling me this I can't remember if it was like right away honestly like I feel like a lot of memories were blocked in certain situations in my past but very shortly after if it wasn't that day it was like a few days later I felt like I was getting suppressed memories kind of resurfacing and I was remembering things from my childhood so that memory was of me being sexually abused when I was a child by one of my family members. I'm not going to say who it was just because like I'm protecting Sophia's identity. I also want to do the same for this family member. And if you do know me and if you do know who this person is, I would ask if you could please not um, comment it or please not say who it is because I just don't feel comfortable with sharing who this person is so this yeah so this happened to me as a child and it happened multiple times of me being around the age of like seven or eight and this was a really hard time for me and i did not want to stay home i just could not stay home this family member did live with me and i was going crazy i was locked down because obviously my parents found out about cameron and now I'm dealing with the suppressed memory that I'm remembering and I just did not want to stay home. I did not want to be around this family member. I did not want to go home, but I had no choice. My parents were super controlling and they had just found out that I was dating someone who they didn't approve of and they also didn't approve of me to date in the first place. So I had to come up with a plan. I knew that I couldn't stay there. I knew that I had to leave so i ended up telling well first of all i told cam that this had happened to me and then i told i think i told my cousin next and i also told sophia that about the suppressed memory and i just wanted to come up with a plan so i was talking to her about it and she actually offered for me to come and live with her and her parents she said that her parents would be cool with it so i was down i was so excited not only were was Sophia and I getting super close, but I could also get away from my situation and live with someone who I trusted at the time. So I was down. Unfortunately, I was still 17 at this point, so I had to wait a few months until I turned 18. I turned 18 in May, and since I was a senior, this would be the same month that seniors got to leave school early, and then it was either late may or early june that we graduated i want to say we graduated june 1st so i had some time to wait until i turned 18 because like i said i was 17 at the time so it was horrible i had to wait it out i had to act like everything was normal and this huge thing wasn't on my mind all the time and I feel like I didn't have that great of a relationship with my mom. I was honestly scared to tell my mom what happened. And yeah, I just kind of kept everything to myself. I just kind of vented to my friends and Cam. But yeah, I just mostly kept everything to myself. And I just feel like I couldn't, I couldn't go to my mom with this information. As time was going on, Sophia actually let me know that she wouldn't be able to let me move into her parents' house. So she offered for me to stay with her best friend, Lily, and that she would be there for most of the summer as well. I did know Lily, but I wasn't close to her as I was to Sophia. But honestly, I was down. I was down for whatever. I just wanted to leave my parents' house. So the second part of the plan was i'm gonna name this other friend carla so this friend was friends with cam and that's kind of how i met her and got kind of closer to her and she was going to be the getaway car she had the car so whenever i was ready to move out she would pull up i would put all of my belongings into her car and we would go <laughs> 
so i just needed to figure out a day now so my birthday came and went i turned 18 so any day after that was go time the seniors were let out, like I said, we got let out a little bit earlier than the rest of the students because we were seniors. And one day after we had already been let out, I was home all the time, which was even worse. One day my parents let me know that they had to take my mom's car to the dealership. They would be taking it in the afternoon and my dad was working that day, so I had like a pretty good heads up. They weren't pressuring me to go, which was shocking because like i said i was not left home alone they probably thought that it would just be a few minutes the dealership wasn't that far away from my house that they would just go drop off the car and then come right back i knew that this was my moment i did not know when i would get an opportunity like this again because i was never left home alone at this point it was it was go time so that whole day i was cleaning my room i was packing up as much stuff as i could and i did let carla know that i would be needing her that day so she pulled up to the house she parked like a few houses away and she was waiting for my dad to come home i also wrote a letter to my mom stating what happened i actually did mention the suppressed memory i didn't mention that i was going to be living with lily i just kind of was pretty vague about where i was going so as soon as my dad came home they left i told carla to pull up to the house we grabbed as much of my stuff as we could i slipped the letter under my mom's door and i left i forgot to mention this but sophia had given me her old phone so i was hiding it from my parents and that's how i was able to stay with cam and we were able to still communicate with each other he was a year older than me so whilst i was a senior he was in college but we did stay together. So that day that I was moving out, he was so upset because he had a shift at work and he couldn't get out of it. So he would see me that that night when he got off. So he wasn't there to help me, but he really did wish that he could be there. So I had my trap phone, I had my belongings. I also took my birth certificate, my like social security card, all of those things that I would have needed and we left it was such a weird car ride it felt surreal i had been so trapped and not been able to do anything that it felt so weird to be with a friend in her car so it felt like a new beginning and it was it felt freeing i felt so just like chains were removed from me so that was a really 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 intense car ride for me i was just having all of these emotions all of these feelings going through me i was also really scared because i didn't i had never done anything like this like yes i had rebelled and dated the person that i'm now getting married to <laughs> but yes i had rebelled and dated but i had never left my house this was another level this was intense so we pulled up to lily's parents home i got to meet them they are so sweet and i'm forever going to be grateful for this family they are literally like second parents to me i just love that god had placed me with this family and he was looking out for me and i'm just i'm just really grateful to have lived there and yeah so i met that family really shortly after I arrived at Lily's house. Obviously my parents, like I said, they were just dropping off the car and then coming back home. So I had my trap phone and I think I was like logged into Facebook. So my mom starts to message me on Facebook. I was scared. I did not know what to do, but I was just honestly telling her that I was okay. I didn't mention where I was because I didn't want her to come and look for me. I think they ended up calling the police, but the police couldn't do anything because I was 18 and it wasn't like, I wasn't missing so yeah <laughs> my mom was messaging me and she was obviously really upset she wanted me to come home but i was not budging i was not letting her know where i was until my mom started to say some really dark stuff she was you know saying that she was going to harm herself she was saying some really dark stuff so i gave her one piece of information and i let her know that i was with my friend lily and that i was okay 
So I guess my mom contacted my high school, asked for Lily's address, and I think that the fact that they gave her that address was not right and a complete breach of security, but whatever. <laughs> my mom pulls up shortly after to Lily's house. I was not happy to see her, obviously. I didn't want to see my mom. My dad didn't come, it was just my mom. And I did not want to go back with my mom. She was pleading. She was so upset. Obviously, she really wanted me to go. But I just, obviously, I did not want to go back with my mom. That was not going to happen. So Lily's parents ended up interjecting, kind of intervening for me. And they just told my mom, maybe I should stay the night and figure out things. Maybe the situation should cool down before we kind of just sit down and talk. And... That ended up just, I guess, kind of helping my mom and meeting Lily's parents and seeing that they were such nice people, probably calmed her down a bit too. So my mom ended up leaving, which was so shocking to me. <laughs> um, yeah, so I did end up staying with Lily's parents for two years. Like I said, forever grateful to them. They really helped to just change my life giving me a place to stay when I was in such need. I love them so much. Um, my relationship with my parents didn't really get too much better. We didn't really talk. Honestly, I just felt like I needed space and my parents didn't really understand that. And obviously they wanted to get me to come back home. They wanted to talk, to this, talk about the situation and I wasn't ready. And I feel like I'm still not ready to address certain things, but yeah, our relationship didn't really get better, and I do pray that one day we can get to the point that we are able to have a relationship again, but we're still working on that. I'm still working on things on my end as well, um, but my parents ended up moving to another state two years ago. I have been moved out, by the way, for five years now. I moved out in 2016. All of this happened when I was 18 in 2016, so... I have been on my own for a while now. So yeah, that whole experience has really helped to kick me off into the real world <laughs> and also helped me to start with my self-growth journey. I was really able to mature, find myself, and I was out of that box that my parents kept me in. So this channel is going to be dedicated, like I said, to self-growth, self-improvement, with topics relating to faith, health, fitness, lifestyle, pretty much whatever topics I feel like making that have to do with self-improvement. But if you guys enjoyed my story, I would ask that you please give me a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more content like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button. This was really fun and I'm I'm happy to share my story. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts or if you have a sim similar story to mine, please comment it down below. Okay, <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one.